Healthy Lifestyle Crib Presents 8 Ways Rich People Don't Spend Their Money I got a little loan just two days ago so I could upgrade to the newest iPhone. Instinctively, as I was leaving the store, I knew I had to have it. When I overheard a Forbes list millionaire discussing a model that had been out for four years, the realization hit me like a ton of bricks. Rich people don't buy what poor people want, and it's not just things like phones, clothes, and shoes. In awe of the magnificent expensive clothes worn by listers, the average Joe will either save up for a while or take on some debt to achieve the same look. Genuinely successful people don't care about label recognition or label pricing, preferring instead to dress in the comfort of basic t-shirts and trousers. That's it, they've made it and they're feeling good about themselves. Many people are willing to take out a loan and pay for it for the rest of their lives so that they can possess some extravagant property, whether it be a penthouse, a mansion, or a luxury resort. The wealthy would rather buy a nice enough home at a reasonable price or a rundown property and put their money into making it habitable again. When it comes to tech, have you ever replaced a perfectly functional older model with a brand new release? Each and every one of us has done it at one time or another, and some of us have even gone so far as to sell belongings or take out loans to fund the purchase of the latest and greatest electronic gizmo. Why? To make themselves look more wealthy and fashionable, but in reality many successful individuals have been using standard phones for years without complaint. Since we're on the topic, let's talk about loans, another area where the wealthy and the poor differ greatly. Keeping away from debt borrowing money for the purpose of spending it immediately, whether through loans, credit cards, or other means. It's a never-ending cycle of debt as the poor take out loans to pay off other loans so they can keep up appearances of wealth they don't actually have. Two plates of food, one from a wealthy person and the other from a poor person, were placed on the table. Do you think that plate of steamed vegetables, cereals, and even some cooked chicken looks tasty? Then, the mouth-watering sight of a huge burger, greasy fries, and a generous helping of salt makes you wonder whose plate this is. The wealthy typically eat this kind of simple meal. It makes more sense for them to choose something unappealing but healthy and inexpensive over something tasty but harmful for their stomachs and their wallets. There's a stereotype that once you make your first million, you have to go out and blow it all on a flashy car, fancy suit, and dinners at the finest restaurants. But some billionaires still drive old but reliable cars, take public transportation, and dress like the rest of us. People like that don't have an ego crisis or feel the need to prove anything to anyone. Respect comes from seeing that they are having fun and are secure in their abilities, rather than from giving them shiny materialistic things. When I say, get rich quick schemes, I don't just mean investing in a pyramid scheme. The pursuit of fast wealth and success can also include visits to, and payments to, fortune tellers, psychics, gamblers, and the lottery. How can one with a lot of money foresee certain outcomes? Gather as much as information as possible, process it thoroughly, and then place a calculated wager, this strategy usually pays off. How many people who become wealthy after attending a program promising five easy steps to riches for the low price actually ended up becoming wealthy themselves? A successful person is someone who puts in plenty of time and effort at work and who works hard, but who also works smart because working yourself to exhaustion isn't the road to success. These programs on how to grow rich and successful are only good for their producers. What do the wealthy rather do with their time and money? For starters, their self-improvement, which shouldn't be confused with get-rich-quick schemes. Yes, wealthy people will never regret spending out thousands of dollars for training to learn a new trade or enhance a current one. They may also contribute to the cost of a gym membership, reasoning that this is an investment in the individual's future well-being that will yield dividends in the form of enhanced physical and mental health, or increased earnings potential, or both. Charity, the wealthy donate millions to a variety of organizations every year. It's not uncommon for them to go on their own projects, and before you respond. Well, duh, they have the additional income to accomplish that, keep in mind that donations can take many forms. Helping out at a local nonprofit organization is another great way to contribute. The simple answer is that it's rewarding to help others and improves your own mood. It has the power to dissipate any lingering sadness and keep you functioning at peak performance. If you give it a shot, you'll witness firsthand how far we've come in terms of technology. There are some extremely wealthy people who feel an immense responsibility, as though the world's technological advancement depends solely on them. They put a lot of resources into creating cutting-edge tech. The rich like Elon Musk, Bill Gates, and Steve Jobs I can't imagine our current state of affairs without their contributions. Material wealth may eventually fade, but the things you felt will never be forgotten. This is why the wealthy travel so frequently, 
and I don't mean on picture-perfect beach vacations at five-star resorts. These days, even wealthy tourists seek out authentic experiences, such as staying at a quaint inn or dining at a family-run restaurant. So, you've probably heard all the tales about people who stumble across a fortune just to waste it all in a matter of months. This is because they are ignoring the cardinal rule of expanding capital. If your money is just sitting in the bank or being irresponsibly spent on things like a new phone or clothes, it isn't growing your business. Rather, it's preferable to watch your savings, investments, or business ventures grow organically as long as you've done the calculations and research to ensure success. The difference between accomplishing something and thinking about how much money you'll make is little when it comes to this pot of cash. Having a lot of money is something that many individuals fantasize about, often to the point of drawing elaborate images of the lavish life they imagine they are living. That's where the dream remains trapped inside their head, unfortunately. The ideal path is not to pursue wealth for its own sake, but to develop into someone who is highly valuable to others. Wealth comes to those who are very self-disciplined and unwilling to give up on their dreams. It may be anything from starting your own cafe to shooting the movie you've been dreaming of or even building a brand new type of jet that will change the world. Whatever it is that you're really into. While these individuals are out there achieving the desired result. Money seems to gravitate toward them, and those whose main motivation is financial can waste their lives watching TV and hoping for a fortune. To the average person, the lives of the wealthy appear to be carefree and entertaining. That's not how it works, it's more accurate to say, simply strive toward your goals and live modestly. Meetings, conferences, paperwork, the gym, family time, flights, more meetings, reading, and of course, eating and sleeping, all compete for their time. Somewhere along the line, not everyone realizes they can't keep up with the pace and shoulder all the burden. I don't see the sense in being wealthy if I'm too busy to enjoy it. What do you think? If you've gained some knowledge from this video, please like and share it with others. Thanks for watching.